18 people were killed in a helicopter crash in Krasnoyarsk region in Siberia on Saturday. The incident occurred in the Vankor field area in eastern Siberia. The Vankor is the region's largest oil field operated by Russian oil company Rosneft. And the victims were workers and crew members heading to their shift at an oil pumping station. The Russian-made Mi-8A aircraft knocked into the cargo of an adjacent helicopter as both were completing a takeoff. According to a confidential United Nations report, North Korea has not stopped its nuclear and missile programs in violation of the United Nations sanctions. The six-month report by independent experts monitoring the implementation of the UN sanctions was submitted to the Security Council. The North Korea Sanctions Committee, the North Korean mission to the United Nations, did not respond to a request for a comment on the report. The United Nations report has said that North Korea, in fact, is cooperating with Syria and has been trying to sell weapons to Yemen's Houthis. The South Sudan's warring parties involved in the country's lengthy civil war are all set to sign a peace agreement in the Sudanese capital of Khartoum on Sunday. The hopes are up that the deal will bring about a resolution to years of conflict which has plagued the country. South Sudan has hardly seen a day since of peace since it gained independence way back in 2011. But recent progress was made with a preliminary power-sharing deal between the government and the opposition groups in late July. Now, United States federal judge ruled that the Trump administration must fully restore a program that protects young immigrants who were brought to the United States illegally as children, including accepting new applications for the program. But the judge was referring to the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, or DACA. Now, the United Nations... High Commissioner for Human Rights Zaid Rad Al Hussein has expressed deep alarm at spiraling Cameroon violence, blaming the government and also the armed groups for a litany of abuses in the Anglophone regions during the unrest that has displaced more than 190,000 people so far. The scores of civilians have been killed in Cameroon in the escalating violence since last year. The victims of the post-election violence in Zimbabwe were finally buried on Saturday. Among the six killed was 53-year-old mother of two, Sylvia Mafosa, who was killed in Harare just as she attempted to flee the violent clashes. The protests in Zimbabwe erupted against President Emerson Mangwangwa's ruling ZANU-PF party's landslide victory in the House of Assembly vote, with protesters accusing the government of rigging the elections. Now, 115 people have been injured as clashes between student protesters and security forces erupted in Bangladesh's capital, Dhaka. The student protests in Bangladesh have intensified over the past few days, with protesters setting ablaze over 317 vehicles. The students have taken to the streets of Dhaka to express anger and outrage over the lack of road safety in the country. Now, the protests were sparked after two teenagers were killed when a privately run bus ploughed through a crowd of college students on the 29th of July. As Denmark's new law banning the use of garments such as the full face veil comes into effect, a woman has now become the first person to be charged with wearing a veil in the public. That is now considered a criminal offence. The legislation which came into effect on Wednesday imposes a fine of about 1,000 kroner on any woman who is found wearing a garment that hides the face. The new ban has prompted protests in Denmark and has reignited the debate about whether a law like this is outright discriminatory discrimination against Muslim women. The tens of thousands of South Korean women participated in a mass protest on Saturday against secretly filmed spy camp pornography. Now, since the month of May, monthly demonstrations in Seoul have shattered records to become the biggest ever women's protest in South Korea.
As the Iranians brace for a return of U.S. sanctions this month, sporadic protests were taking place in cities across the country for a fourth day, with demonstrators today attacking a Shiite seminary west of Tehran. So the country is in fact facing a plunging real over fears of reimposition of crippling sanctions by the United States. The thousands of people gathered in Tel Aviv in Israel on Saturday to protest against Israel's new law, nation law, state law, which grants only the Jewish Jews the right to self-determination. Now, the law has in fact provoked outrage amongst the country's most integrated minority, the Druze. Now, the new law has been facing fierce criticism both at home and abroad for its very discriminatory nature. In Palestine, scores of mourners attended a funeral procession for a 15-year-old boy who died in the latest round of border protests. The teenager, Muad Ziyad Al-Suri, was killed by Israeli gunfire and later succumbed to his injuries. Now, Al-Suri was one of the two Palestinians killed in protests on Friday in which at least about 220 others were wounded. At least about 157 Palestinians have been gunned down and one Israeli has also lost his life by a sniper in Gaza during more than four months of weekly Friday border protests that began on the 30th of March. The Islamic State has claimed responsibility for the attack on a Shiite mosque in Afghanistan's Paktia province that had killed 20 and injured over 80 people. But the attack was carried out by two militants who were clad in burqas while hundreds of people had gathered for Friday prayers in the mosque. Now, the Islamic State militants view the Shiite Muslims as heretics and have been responsible for previous attacks on Shiite mosques. The Chinese State Councillor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi has summarized the top takeaways from the Foreign Minister's meeting of the 10 member states of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, which was held in Singapore earlier this month. Now, the minister said that three important consensus issues on supporting free trade building an East Asian economic community and also speeding up the negotiations on the regional comprehensive economic partnership were reached in Singapore. The Pakistan Tehreek-e Insaf's chairman and Pakistan's Prime Minister-elect Imran Khan has decided to form a small federal cabinet in the first phase of the government formation. The reports state that the Mutahida Khomi movement, Pakistan, and also the Balochistan Awami Party will be given one federal ministry in Khan's cabinet. The decision was, decide, was made in a high-level meeting of the party which was held at Imran Khan's residence. The rescuers from the Spanish aid group Proactiva Open Arms and also rescue rescued 87 migrants in international waters in the Mediterranean Sea. The migrants were discovered 59 nautical miles off the coast of Libya and most of the 87 migrants rescued were from Sudan and included eight miners. The Yazidis in the Iraqi city of Sinjar marked the fourth anniversary of the Islamic State group's attack on their community. The Yazidis are an ancient religious minority in Iraq and in August 2014 the Islamic State group militants had swept into Sinjar, the ancestral homelands of the Yazidis near the Syrian border. The tens of thousands of Yazidis managed to escape to Mount Sinjar where most of them were eventually rescued by US-backed Kurdish forces. The Democratic Republic of Congo will start an Ebola vaccine drive as early as next week to counter a new flare-up in the heavily populated eastern part of the Central African country. An Ebola outbreak has officially been declared in Congo with 33 people already dead. Six new cases of fever have also surfaced out of which four are confirmed cases of Ebola.
The Indian Foreign Minister Sushma Swaraj held talks with Uzbekistan's Prime Minister Abdullah Aripov in Tashkent to boost bilateral ties. Sushma Swaraj also held delegation-level talks with her Uzbek counterpart Abdulaziz Kamilov. And both leaders discussed the issue of defence, trade and economy. And India's Foreign Minister is on a three-nation visit to Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan and Uzbekistan as a part of India's efforts to enhance its defence, security and strategic partnership with Central Asian nations. An art studio in northeast Beijing used by dissident artists was torn down on Saturday with a giant excavator demolishing walls and workers moving away his art. Now, the sudden demolition came seven years after his Shanghai art space had also been bulldozed way back in 2011. The Al Weiwei is often described as China's most high profile artist, dissident, and political activist and has become a vocal campaigner on migration. U.S. President Donald Trump takes a job at television host Dan Lemon by tweeting that LeBron James was just interviewed by the dumbest man on television, Don Lemon. He made LeBron look smart, which isn't easy to do. I like Mike. Trump was criticizing CNN cable television host Don Lemon and his interview with the basketball star LeBron James. The James has been very vocal about Trump and had also previously said that Trump has emboldened racists in the United States and it urged the country to not allow itself to be divided along racial lines. The seven reception centers for refugees started operating in the southern German state of Bavaria. The so-called anchor centers take their name from a composite of the German words for arrival, decision and turn, each transit center being equipped to house at least about 2,000 migrant refugees and others. The more than 700 firefighters are battling a forest fire in southern Portugal. The blaze began on Saturday in the hilly Monchik area of southern Algrave region, which is popular with the tourists. The authorities evacuated two villages in the area as temperatures climbed to a record high in the Iberian Peninsula amidst a Europe-wide heat wave. Wildfires continued to rage from Greece to Sweden. The thousands in California have been forced out of their homes in, in the state as wildfires continue to rage in the region. The blaze in Mendocino County, north of San Francisco, had spread to cover more than 90,000 hectares of land by early Saturday. The California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection has said that the fire increased by more than 25% from Friday and it was only 34% contained until now. Now, the desert state of Utah is also battling a massive wildfire. Thousands of residents have been forced to leave their ranch properties and take shelter in temporary relief camps. The fire was ignited by lightning day before yesterday and firefighters struggled to contain the blaze. The fire grew from 1,500 acres to 7,000 in just five hours, according to the fire officials. Now, this is set to be an increasingly a tough task for the firefighters in Utah who have been struggling with back-to-back -back wildfires this summer. The weather experts also warn that exceptional drought conditions coupled with intense heat waves is in fact exacerbating the problem of wildfires across states such as Utah, Arizona, New Mexico and Colorado. In India, the floodwaters swept through cities located along the Ganges River on Saturday, wreaking havoc for residents of the country's northern Uttar Pradesh state. Severe water logging was also seen in various parts of the industrial city of Kanpur and the temple town of Varanasi. Incessant rains over the past few weeks has caused flooding in hundreds of villages in Uttar Pradesh. More than 1,500 people have died so far this year across the country due to storms, floods and landslides. The tens of thousands of gay rights supporters gathered along Amsterdam's canals on Saturday for the city's annual Pride Amsterdam event. Now, the event features gay, lesbian and also transgender people 
dancing to music on elaborate colorful boat floats with onlookers cheering them on. The Canal Parade is the main attraction of Pride Amsterdam. Now the 7th China Equestrian Tournament opened on Saturday in North China's Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region, attracting more than 400 top Chinese and foreign riders to compete in six events. Now the annual equestrian race, which is the highest level of its kind in the country, will last four days in the county-level city of Zilinot. And in Paris, the 10th Gay Games, which aim to raise awareness about gay and transgender rights, have kicked off athletes from Saudi Arabia, Egypt and Russia, were among the thousands of people who convened in Paris for the Games. Now, over 12,700 participants from 91 nations are expected to take part during the competition. To prove consent, Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein has submitted in court email that he had received from the woman who accused him of rape. One of the email reads, I love you, always do, but I hate feeling like a mistress. Now, the woman had sent the email on the 8th of February 2017, nearly four years after Weinstein allegedly had raped her. Now, the French powerhouse Paris Saint-Germain have secured their first trophy of the new season by thrashing Monaco 4-0 in the French Super Cup that was held in Shenzhen, China. Now, Angel Di Maria scored in either half, while Christopher Nkaku and Tim Viajo were also on target. The Brazilian superstar Neymar also played about 15 minutes late on as new manager Thomas Tuchel began his reign by guiding PSG to a record equaling 8th Super Cup title. And Spanish giants Barcelona have completed their fifth signing of the summer transfer window by agreeing to a deal for the Chilean midfielder Atuaro Ardal. The 31-year-old has been signed on a three-year contract from German champions Bayern Munich for a fee in the region of about 25 million euros. The Vidal had spent the last three seasons at Bayern scoring 22 goals and bagging about 18 assists over 124 competitive games.